So you have this great, you know, Apple website, but you have zero users. How do you go from zero users to, to not zero users to maybe that 500,000 plus users? Um, so the first piece of advice I have, and this is an, another relatively simple one, something that you can easily control. There's the concept of eat your own dog food, um, which sounds gross, which it, it is kind of gross. Um, I don't know where it came from. I, I learned it from um, Airbnb, uh, from Brian Chesky, the founder of Airbnb. But the idea is simple. You should use the product that you create. You are the most important user of your product. And I've seen a lot of people uh, mess this up, which is uh, kind of uh, kind of kind of a shame because because uh, you're, you're you're really nerfing yourself if you build a product in a space you don't understand. And and I think one of the traps of Silicon Valley is that like there's trends everywhere, right? It's like oh yeah, like oh VR is a trend, AR is a trend, like blockchain is a trend, right? It's so easy to get bought up in the trends, and you just want to build something within the trend, even though you personally are not going to use any products within that trend because it's you know it's too early stage or it's too esoteric for you. And this is such a, a detriment if you build a product like that because you can't actually use your own product, and it's really hard for you to build that user empathy. When it comes to building products, it really is a big, big exercise in putting yourself in the end user's shoes and having empathy for that user. So after you build your app and launch your app, like you need to understand, you know, how do I improve this app, right? And generally how you do this is you put yourself in the user's shoes and go, okay, let's say I'm like, you know, a user who just downloaded the app. And of course I have high expectations because customers always right. What parts of the app feel clunky? What parts of the app feel like they're missing missing things, right? You need to go through this exercise in order to figure out how to evolve your app. And in the beginning, it's going to be really tricky because you're not going to have any users in the beginning. So you need to kind of self-power that, especially in the beginning. So you have to use your own product. And that is how you fill in the gap as you get those initial users. And this is pretty much what I did with Random Main Picker. Um, so of course, I had um, my teacher friend um, who was using it, but he, of, of course, was quite busy uh, <laughs> as a teacher. So a lot of the feedback had to power myself. So if you like go to the next slide, um, I can explain like how I use Random Name Picker for myself. So I have a lot of board games and I have, well, pre-pandemic, I had friends <laughs> come over often and we would play, we'd play board games, but we didn't know which one to play. There's so many amazing board games. So I started using my Random Name Picker app to choose which board game that we would play. And by, you know, using this app, you know, regularly myself, by using it, you know, dozens upon dozens of times in the beginning, I could feel out that clunkiness. I could be, okay, yeah, this, this, you know, button could be bigger or I could, you know, add this feature because I, you know, I, I hit this use case and I'm re I really want this feature or, you know, this feels slow, like this animation feels slow or like there's too many clicks for this slow, right? Because I was using it myself, I could feel all that out for myself and then I could essentially improve the app in this very self-powered fashion. One more thing I want to call out in this topic around eating your own dog food and being a user of your product. Not only will it give you empathy for the user and be able to build a better product, but also from the hiring perspective, I feel like that there's a ton of value there, right? Like let's say that you build out, I don't know, some like board game chooser app where like you somehow have a list of board games and you can talk about the different attributes. So that's a big conversation starter now. If you put that on your Ember profile, or if you put that on your resume, when I look at your resume, I am now going to use it as a jumping off point. You say, hey, this person really cares about this topic, or maybe you care about solar energy, for example, like some random topic, and you build an app to to like tell people how much more efficient could their home be if they installed solar panels based on their location and zip code or whatever, right? Like people are interested in people who have interests. I feel like having an app and building an app around an interest that you have is a really amazing way to get to know smart people and have intelligent conversations. And those intelligent conversations that you have will often lead to amazing outcomes, not only getting a job, but finding a mentor or, you know, being able to collaborate with interesting people.